Alright guys, we're back with another video. I've been getting a lot of questions recently on how to act, hook up a power switch to something like this. Now this is a regulated power supply. It's a 12 volt, 20 amp power supply and people want to know what can I do to hook up a switch? Well, a couple things that you can do and there's a couple places where you can hook up a switch and reasons where and why you might want to hook those up. Uh, we're going to go over all that. Now, there's a couple different types of switches that you're going to want to look at. Uh, one is a normal light switch, which is just a, a typical light switch uh, for your house. Now you also have something like this. This is a 12 volt switch, uh, and that's an illuminated 12 volt switch, and this is an on off 12 volt switch. Now, all of this, no matter if this is a 12 volt, 24, 36 volt, all of this will be applicable. It doesn't matter that this is a 12 volt. The most important thing is to get a switch that will work that is rated at least the voltage that you need so if you need a 12 volt switch you need it to be at least 12 volts now keep in mind of what it's rated at either dc or ac current so this would be 120 volts ac going in and 12 volt dc going out now that's just typical house is 120 volts and this is a 12 volt power supply so that's 12 volts going out if you had a 36 volt your switches would have to be at least 36 volt DC if you're going to run a switch off of this side of the amplifier. First thing we're going to do though is talk about this side, the 120 volt side. The 120 volt side, I've already taught you how to hook that up. If you don't know, watch the video. But here's the power cord here. You know that you have a ground, a live, and a neutral. And typically, the, you would just plug it directly into here. Now, if you want to actually wire this into a switch to turn this off, for example, when you're not using it, you'd want to run it to something like this. Now, if you don't know how to run the light switch, we're just going to teach you how to do it real quick. It's very simple. You're going to take your live wire, and you're going to plug it into one of the gold sides. And you're going to take your ground, your green, and plug it up here. Your neutral is going to just go directly to your to here. That's not going to it's not going to go to this switch at all. The next thing you're going to do is once you have your live hooked up and your ground hooked up, which we would probably wire here just because it would be easier to wire both of these. We're going to take some extra wire that we have laying around and run it from the other side of the switch. So for our positive, we would run here. And then, of course, we'd run it right into the positive input of here. Now what that will do is when you flip your switch, it will turn on and off all the power to this unit, on and off. That means anything connected to this will disconnect power when you shut this off. So if, for example, you wanted every device that's hooked up, which this can hook up up to three devices. So if you want all three devices to be turned off, that's how you'd do it. So if you're running like LEDs, for example, and you want them all off on a switch, you'd run it. It's that simple. Um, However, that's not always the best thing to do, and I'll tell you the reason why. Here is a car amplifier. Now, a lot of people use these to run car amplifiers in their house, and I showed you how to do that in an earlier video as well. And if you remember, there's three wires you have to hook up on the back of a car amplifier. You need to hook up a negative, a positive, and a battery lead. Now, if we wanted to hook up, say, a switch to just turn on and off the car amplifier, which is... Fairly simple, you would run one of these 12 volt switches. We no longer need a 120 volt switch. We're gonna use a 12 volt DC switch now. Now a 12 volt DC switch is just gonna hook up onto the positive end. So here, now your ground's gonna go directly to here like always. Now, in the video where I taught you how to hook it up, I taught you to hook up both the red and yellow to the positive. However, if you were to do that in this case, anytime you turn off your switch, your radio is going to lose all of its presets. So it's going to lose the time, it's going to lose... And that's because it's hooked up to the battery wire, and the battery wire is no longer getting power. So there's a simple fix for that. And it's very simple, okay? Let's move this out of the way so you don't get confused. We would hook this up like normal. I'm sorry, we would hook this up with the switch to it. So this would be the, your two reds. And that would be your 12-volt ignition power. So this would basically now become our ignition switch to turn the car on and off, basically. So now it thinks, okay, I'm receiving power. 
now I'm not. And we would run another line directly to another positive onto here, which would always give it a constant 12 volt power source. Now remember when I said that you may not always want to switch on that this side, your 120 volt side? That's because if you ever shut this off and you hooked up something like a car stereo to it, it's always going to lose its battery function. It's always going to lose its presets no matter how you run the second part of it. So your best bet if you're running this is to do just like what I said. Um, run the switch in between these two. You know, one side's going to go to each side of your switch. All right. That's going to be on your red wires. And then run your yellow wire directly into another VCC positive here. And you're hooked up. All right, guys. That's uh, that simple to actually hook up any switches to that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys. Double digit thousand.